Well, as we said, we're going to start with Mike Dean this week, who is standing by for a little bit of a green, because you've been doing a little bit of podcasting this week. You've been in Simon Jordan's podcast up front, Mike, and it, it was a fascinating listen. Now, we'll talk about the more human siding of kind of refereeing and officiating in a short while, but you know what's caused the controversy. You know what's causing all the talk out there, plenty of articles, plenty of people having their say online as well. That game last season, right near the start of the season between Chelsea and and Tottenham. Chelsea are leading 2-1. It ends up being 2-2. Just before, and this is the real key talking point, just before Harry Kane's equaliser, Chelsea had this huge, huge appeal for a penalty. Christian Romero pulling Mark Cucurea's hair. Now, let's put this into context. Anthony Taylor, the referee, you're on VAR that day. What happened? Talk us through what happened and what should have happened. Well, what happened is I've seen, I've seen the incident, um, looked at it, uh, numerous occasions, probably too many times. Yes, he's pulled his hair. Was it a violent act? Probably not, but he shouldn't pull his hair. Probably should have sent Anthony to the screen, never. That book stops with me and I, and I should have sent him. So it's a Why, why didn't you? For those who, who haven't read yeah, haven't well, heard. It's funny because that's all been blown out of context because what I've said is not old news. It's been out in, the, in, in news reports before, maybe four or five months ago. So it's not new news. Um, and referring to as a mate, I mentioned to the guys before that what you've got to look at it in context is that when you, you might not like some guys in your refereeing group, but when, you're in, when you get a game on a the weekend, there's four of you in the middle, that's the VR and the AVR, and that's them six people, they're your mates for the day. You might play in a professional team, I said to Clinton before, there might be 11 players, and you might not like three or four of them, but in, on the, uh, three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, they're your mates and you want your mates to do well. So the mate thing has been like blown all out of proportion, to be fair, but I want to support the referee as much as I can, and that's what you do as a VAR. Yes, it was wrong, and I should have sent him to the screen, but to say I didn't send him because he's a mate is an absolute farce, and it's just been all blown out of, out of proportion, to be honest with you. Just people trying to make a story. You just admitted now, yeah, Mike, that is a mate. Why did you not send him that, though? Because obviously, it, it, it's, uh, and I know I'm asking for everyone, because there's huge pressure on managers, huge pressure on players to deliver, and obviously we know probably Andy Taylor probably wasn't having his best game, but why would you not, se why would you not send him um, to the monitor to have a look? I think I said to you before that it had both managers, uh, both managers been cautioned. It cautioned about eight or nine players. Um, and I tried to protect the referee, not because he's me mate, because yeah. I tried to protect the referee. It was wrong, and, and I, was, I paid the price. Didn't have a game for three weeks after that. So I did pay the price. The book stopped to me, and it was a bad mistake by myself. But, Mike, is it not your duty uh, in, in your role with the VAR in that situation to uphold the integrity of it the is. game, to uphold the integrity of officiating, regardless of your relationship with Anthony Taylor, regardless of the fact he's a friend? In that instance, you've got to put friendship, surely if you're being professional, 100%. right to one side. Why 100%. Didn't you? And the word I've used probably not the wrong words. If I said colleague, it's a bit different. Because mm. you use the word friend, everything always is your best mate. He's not my best mate. <laughs> We're just mates on the day. Because when you go out as a team of six, you want to look after your mate in the middle. That's what you do. The liners do exactly the same. The fourth man does the same. The ref will be, oh, look after the liners, exactly the same. Book to me, you should have sent him. It's simple as that. When does that dawn on you that you made a huge error there when Harry Kane scores? Probably as soon as I've said check complete. OK. He thinks, so why, why didn't I do it? Yeah. And I, I know the book stops him. I said before that what we had last year, we had somebody who was also in there, like as a hub command, who kind of looks after referees and kind of has not the final say, but if we're going down the wrong route of not sending somebody over, yeah. they should step in. They didn't step in, so I thought I'd done the right decision. Yeah. But, but aren't you making it worse for him? The oh, fact 100%. that you don't send him to the screen. Yeah, well, I, I am. I, I, I held me out of straight away and said I made a mistake. We had a referee's meeting the following day. Got pulled in by John Moss, who's in charge of the guys. I just said, look, I said, I've dropped a right ricket here. And I know what I should have done, but I didn't do it. And the book starts with me. So, you know, there's mm -hmm. nothing else I can do. It's, once it's done, it's done. So, no, that's we, it. we, so you've then put your hands up. You've gone, I've made a mistake. We don't see you for three weeks. Yeah. What do you do? How do you get over that? Because as, as a player, I was one of them. If I made a mistake on a Saturday or whenever it was, I took it home and I was... Did you, as, a man, um, as referees, do you do the same? Yeah, we, we had a meeting the following day, and I, I sat down with a few of the lads and just, sat, just went through the process. I spoke to Anthony the following day and just said, look, you're brave enough and bold enough and ugly enough. If I send you over seven times during the game, as long as the decision is the correct decision, I should have sent him over. I didn't send him over. That's my mistake. Well, you know, when you think of the ramifications, though, you look at Thomas Tuchel, lost his job just after that because he didn't well, get... Well, it wasn't just because of one decision. No, but I get that. But that and then even Chelsea getting the three points... Yeah. Can you understand Chelsea fans' kind of agreement yeah, of when it comes can. to Anthony Taylor because he's the one of who gets it, it from Chelsea fans? It's not Anthony's fault. Anthony shouldn't get any grief. It's, it's me that should get the grief, and I've had the grief. You know, so I, I got the grief when it first happened 15 months ago. It's not old news. It's been out in the press before now. The people obviously hasn't picked it up, but it's been out in the press before now. Because on the podcast with Simon, that's been it. It's just been the way it's been worded. It's come out wrong, but it's my fault.
you know, tomorrow, book starts with me and the story. And I, and I think for, for people watching at home and as, as football fans, what I guess many will want to know after what you've said in this podcast and, as you say, you've said already before, but as a fan, you'd want to know, well, is this kind of incident where that kind of the looking after a colleague, thinking about them as well as trying to be professional, you cross that line. Is it commonplace? Are we going to be looking at incidents this afternoon and just a little question mark going up about what's going on between the officials at the ground and what's happening in the VAR centre? No, I mean, if they're clear and obvious there, you send them over. And as I said before, it's my mistake last year. I didn't send them over. Book starts me, but it, but it doesn't happen. But what you do as a VAR, I've said, I've said this before, even two weeks ago when we were on the show, that you want to try and look after the guys in the middle because... As much as you want to get the decision right, you don't want to send the guy to the screen five, six, seven times a game because it looks like the refs have an absolute nightmare. You want to try and look, give him some better... Well, I can see why he's made that decision. He's given a yellow card. Is it clear and obviously not a yellow card? Should it be a red? No, I'll stick with the yellow card. You go check complete. If it's like last week, we mentioned the um, Liverpool game. At normal speed, it looks like a red card. And I said red card. By the time I watched it on the replay and spoke to Paul, it's a yellow card. Mm. You know, so it's, it's not a case of not sending him over. Now, nobody questioned the, the VR last week when they, when they didn't send Thomas over to the screen. Yeah, yeah. Because at the time, when he goes in with his studs up, it's not clear and obviously wrong. I was clear and obviously wrong, and it's my mistake. I've held my hands. I apologised last year to the whole group. I stood him in front of the group last year and said, look, whatever happened yesterday, it's my mistake. I said, don't go down live looking after people or looking after you, the guys in the afternoon. If he's got to go to the screen, he's got to go to the screen. Yeah, but you know what? Gone. I'm not. I'm not grilling you, but because you are. No, I'm not. <laughs> you, you can <laughs> grill. I'm not going to grill you about the Saudi league. You know why I'm not? I'm not. You know why I'm not grilling him? Why? Because I give him a lift in, so he's oh. all right. Me and my friends. <laughs> you compromise yourself. No, yeah, we're, I give him a lift in, but no, I'm just thinking. You said at the time of it, what is the thought process? Because you said as soon as the, the game kicked off again, you were thinking I've made a big mistake. So how comes at that time there when the game's going up? ahead and you're looking at it, you don't think that you should send Andy Taylor um, to the monitor. Is it, I'm not saying because he's, he's already said he's a colleague, he's not a friend. Is it because he's having a bad game, you don't no, want to put too much pressure on him? He didn't have a bad game, he's just got like seven yellow cards, both managed, both managed being cautioned. Mm. And like, you think self last minute, does, it, does he need that? No, he doesn't, but yes, he did need it and he should have gone to the screen and the book was made as simple as that. Fair. I got punished for not sending him to the screen, mm. didn't have a game for three, four weeks. I still went down to the VR hub and just watched what was going on with the guys to try and get, learn what the process. I ain't the best VR. I never was the best VR. There's not. There's none of the guys who are really top VARs because there's no dedicated VRs anymore because they do referee and full official and a VAR. I mean, one of the things you did put across in that podcast was was talking about the human side of yeah. referee. And we often think of robots when it comes to officials that they're going to be infallible. Why are they making mistakes? But they're humans. You you spoke to Simon Short about being petrified of heading. To do your shift on VAR, are, are others feeling like that? I hated it because when I finished refereeing, all I've known for 22 years is refereeing. And uh, you go down on the Friday night, first couple of weeks was fine. You have this huge, nearly swore then, huge mistake. <laughs> Thank you for not. <laughs> 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 I've got a delay point I've been told in case I do say. There's enough really heat on you already without a bit of off <laughs> And like, of course, the first four weeks was fine. There was no problems. I've had that mistake and anything. So, God, why, why didn't I just... I'm driving down three weeks later and right, if it happens again, you, you send the ref over. If it happens again, you send him over. Do it properly, do it properly, do it properly. And then you're driving down... Another game didn't go too well. Another game, which, is, which I won't mention. So, I didn't give... I recommended that Stuart went to the screen. Uh, in a game, and then you go down the Friday night. You think, "Oh, Christ, just up the referee, referees properly." They do referee proper. But someone goes down in the area, and he gives a pen. It's an easier decision for the VAR to say, "Well, there's contact there." We mentioned the Fulham one last week. There's a bit of a nudge mm. in the back, not clear and obviously wrong. So you stick with a penalty kick. And you say, "Check complete." When he goes down in the area, he doesn't give the pen. Straight you go, "No, here we go." Mm. And I and I hated it. And I said that I hated the last three months of me, of me being VAR. It just wasn't for me. And when you know something's not right for you. You want to try and get out. And I tried everything, every way to get out by asking to do different things. I ended up going down the coaching route in February, and I love the coaching route. I'd go back and do it again if I had to. I love coaching referees in League 1 and League 2 coming through. And when you're going to a, to a VAR hub and you're not enjoying it, you're in the hotel night before, and you're petrified the following day, driving in, thinking, oh, I think the game's going to go. The and we used to always say, oh, there's got a lot of decisions in this game, just winding each other up. And then... It is, it, you don't want to be sitting there being petrified of your job. It's just you, not You, you surely right for cannot me. do that job. You know, as somebody who struggled with anxiety myself, I know how difficult it makes oh, it's, your it's job. Hard. If you're petrified, how do you make a decision when you're under 100%. pressure, you know everyone's watching? That's, that's why I knew come September, October, it just wasn't for me. Mm. And then 
Howard's coming in January. I had a chat with Howard. Has he been in touch, by the way, since... since yeah, he, he spoke to me yesterday afternoon. Is he okay? It's, it's, yeah, it's fine. It's not an issue at all. Obviously, there's things I probably shouldn't have said on there. Well, I've said it. It's come out wrong, but... What, what, in... what shouldn't you have said? I shouldn't have said. I should have said. I should have said the word friend. If I said colleague, it's not an issue, is it? Mm. Everyone makes out his best buddy. Yeah. Goes drinking every week, which I don't. I hardly see him. You know, I, I see him at meetings when he's got the, the games. But we don't come and socialise with, with each other. It just doesn't happen. But it's just the way it's come across. It, it's not old news. It's been out in the press before, five months ago. There's people just dragging stuff up, but they drag stuff for the sake of dragging. stuff. But it's stuff. not dragging stuff up because you went on a podcast and spoke about it again. Well, so inevitably, it's going to reignite. Yes, yeah, it has. And, 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 and I said before, I'll, I'll, I'll take what was coming to me yesterday when I when I landed on the plane yesterday and I, I turned my phone. I think, oh, something's happened here, and then. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I didn't go read it. I didn't read about what I'd said because I knew what I'd said. Did the captain give you a knowing look as you disembarked? <laughs> yeah, he just, he just said, you better get off because you're in, you're in trouble when you get off. There's paparazzi waiting for you. <laughs> but, um, but, but I knew as soon as I landed, it's me fun. Something hasn't gone down well. And I knew what it was. Um, but I was, be, I was being open and honest as I could by what I said. And I'm not going to hide behind stuff. I'm, when, I, you know, when, when you're reffing, you can't really say a lot. And not that I wanted to come out and say what I said. If I use the word colleague, it ain't an issue. Because I use the word friend, it looks like I'm looking after him, and it's just not the way it is.